Hello guys, today I am going to discuss about the topic uh, Hadoop Parallel World. So those who are going to watch this video for the first time, uh, please like, share and subscribe my channel. So let's go into the topic now that is uh, Hadoop Parallel World. So first we will see the history of the Hadoop. See, Hadoop was actually designed by the uh, two scientists that is uh, Doc Cutting and Mike Caffler in the year 2005. And uh, the design of the Hadoop actually it was inspired by the Google only. And Hadoop it will stores the uh, huge amount of the data through the Hadoop distributed file system. And it will processes this data with the technology of the MapReduce. And the designs of HDFS and the MapReduce actually these are inspired completely by the Google file system architecture and the MapReduce. So, whenever uh, actually they started one project that is called as Nutch, that project name is called as the Nutch. But whenever they want to develop that particular project, uh, they have seen these two research papers which was developed by the Google file system, which was developed by the Google. But uh, Google will not reveal uh, all the complete algorithms and uh, the complete set of details in their research papers. But uh, but later after some point of time uh, they thought that these papers were completely relevant to their project that is called as the nurture and uh, finally that's how they have developed their um, their uh, developed their project of uh, hadoop here and uh, one more thing is how why they gave that particular name of hadoop means uh, actually dog son's name uh, son's toy name was uh, hadoop actually that toy is called the toy is the elephant uh, and the same elephant uh, name was Hadoop, uh, ele elephant name was Hadoop they have given and the same name uh, they have given to their project itself. So that's how our uh, Hadoop and uh, Hadoop came into the picture here. And uh, the thing is uh, Hadoop actually it is having uh, for all the organizations it will provide a uh, lot of flexibilities that means whatever the query you are going to give it is going to give some comprehensive answers here without any problem it is going to provide uh, the complete analysis and reports on uh, multiple varieties of the data that can be done by the Hadoop and uh, next one is the Hadoop will handle the varieties of workloads here what are those varieties of workloads it can handle it can handle the search activities it can handle the log processing and it can handle the recommendation systems also we know what is meant by a recommendation system and uh, it can handle the data warehousing and the video and the image analysis also it can be handled here see all these uh, multiple varieties of the workloads can be handled by the Hadoop and uh, Hadoop is an open source project actually uh, Hadoop, uh, it is a open source and completely it was developed by the Apache Software Foundation itself. And uh, the software was originally by them, developed by the world's largest internet uh, companies to capture and analyze the data here. But uh, unlike the structured platforms, uh, structured platforms means we know that uh, SQL is the best one to retrieve the uh, data from the data sets here. But uh, Hadoop is uh, the one variety of uh, thing is uh, we can store uh, different varieties of the data here in uh, whatever the format we want here and we can analyze the lot of analysis we can do it and uh, we can perform the lot of transformations on the data also and one more important point is uh, it can store the terabytes and even petabytes of the data also we can store it here and uh, Hadoop will uh, runs on the clusters of the commodity hardware here uh, Mm, commodity hardware uh, means uh, we are not using any supercomputers or any big storage devices we are not using but very low cost uh, and uh, low cost uh, a normal local CPUs we are going to use it for the storage purpose and uh, that is the reason Hadoop will always one of the biggest advantage of Hadoop is uh, it is having lot of flexibility and it will provides we can do it with the low cost also that is one of the good thing with the Hadoop here and uh, what are the two components of the Hadoop here? What are the two components? Uh, actually, Hadoop, uh, it is the storage actually for the Hadoop cluster here. So, whenever any data sets is uh, sent into that uh, HDFS, HDFS, what it will do means, uh, 
it is having mapper function will be there what it will do means it will tries to break that particular uh, data into the multiple tuples here it will tries to break the data into the multiple tuples here and each and every tuple will be sent to the reducer function what this reducer function will do means say it will tries to do the summarization sorting aggregation and then whatever the output we are going to get that will be sent to the user finally so that's how this hdfs and map reduce will be working here and each and every server will store so just a small fragment of the complete data set and each piece of the data that means each and every data set which is residing on one node can be having three copies of the data sets here why three copies of the data sets means uh, we need to maintain if any storage problems or if any corruption problems are there or if any failures are there means uh, big data will handle here with the another duplicate copy so that is the reason we will maintain the three copies of the data sets here and the map reduce what is the concept of this map reduce means uh, Hadoop will store the entire data set. Actually, HDFS is responsible completely for the storage part. Whereas MapReduce, it is responsible completely for the parallel distribution part. So, across the collection of the servers. So, analytical jobs can be distributed in parallel. And each of these servers will be storing the part of the data here. And uh, each server, it is going to evaluate the question like if any local fragments are coming here, what it will do, it is going to produce the comprehensive answers here. So, MapReduce is the agent that distributes the work and collects the results here. See, this is the diagrammatic representation here. This is my actual data, but I am going to send to these blocks here. These are my different blocks of the data here. So, after this, uh, I am going to use my mapper function and I am going to divide it into the some blocks. And from these uh, different blocks, I am going to send it to the reduce function. And from this reduce function, and again, I am going to get back the results here. Next, we will see what is that uh, old and the new approaches. See, what is this old and the new approaches mean? So, in the old uh, analysis, uh, we take the data on the analytic stack. Uh, we are having with the different layers where we can, uh, we can have the cross communication of the data and working on scale up and expensive hardware here. So that's how our old approaches will be working here. Uh, whereas the new way of uh, using that data and analytics platform is uh, it will uh, that uh, thus all the data and the processing and the analytics can be done in one single layer. That means we are not moving any data here and there here. So I'm going to use it on one layer and I'm going to move my data back and forth uh, but in a very cheaper way and uh, very it is completely scalable and if you if i want to add uh, 100 machines at a time means i can do add 100 machines on one single cluster here and wherever my data is there i can run all my algorithms there itself uh, there is no need of uh, moving my data here and there previously it is not the case my data will be stored somewhere i am going to run my algorithm somewhere that is completely like a uh, massive it is completely in a massive format so that is the difference between the old and the new approaches here and now uh, what are the three main important points here are uh, the technology stack it has been completely changed actually and the new proprietary technologies and uh, open source inventions uh, which helps us in the different approaches here and uh, hardware and the storage that is also one of the biggest uh, thing uh, where uh, it will continues to get cheaper uh, to enable the massive parallel processing here so that's how we are going into the hadoop here why because it will provide the cheaper cost and it is going to do the parallel processing also and uh, the varieties of data that is one of the biggest and the important thing here so why because i am not completely do the my analysis and reporting on only one kind of data here i am going to analyze on the multiple varieties of the data here so where it is having the ability to handle the unstructured data also so that is about the hadoop parallel world so i think uh, hope you understand this video guys so thank you thank you all